was a time that I swore I would never go back. I was blind to the truth, didn't know what I had. I was running, I was searching, but every place I turned for healing left me more broken than the last. Take me back to the place that feels like home. To the people I can depend on, to the faith that's in my bones. Take me back to a preacher and a verse where they've seen me at my worst. To the love I had at first. Oh, I wanna go to church. Trying to walk on my own, but I wound up lost. Now I'm making my way to the foot of the cross It's not a trophy for the winners It's a shelter for the sinners And it's right where I belong Take me back to the place that feels like home To the people I can depend on To the faith that's in my bones Take me back to a preacher and a verse Where they've seen me at my worst To the love I had at first Oh, I wanna go to church I wanna go to church Oh, more than an obligation It's our foundation like home to the people I can depend on to the faith that's in my bones take me back to a preacher and a verse where they see me at my worst to the love I had at first oh I wanna go to church yeah I wanna go to church Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Happy Happy Easter Easter to everybody in church. Happy Easter to those watching at home this morning. And happy Easter to those around the corner. (laughs) You can't see us. It's wonderful to be together to worship God this morning, to celebrate the resurrection. So we're just going to start with a few words and then we're going to go into our, our Lent liturgy. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to have our Easter liturgy for today and decorate the cross. And then we're going to sing hymn 309, See What a Morning. Thank you, Anne. And so we repeat the words that you've already said three times. (laughs) Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If the people who are stripping the cross could line up in the middle, please, it would just make it a bit easier and a bit quicker. Darkness cannot overcome the light of God. Death cannot defeat the life of God. We take away the symbols of betrayal, suffering and death. We remove the cup the symbol of suffering love. (coughs) 
We remove the money bag and 30 pieces of silver, the symbol of betrayal. We remove the crown of thorns and purple robe, the reminders of the mockery that Jesus endured. We remove the whip, the reminder of the cruelty inflicted upon our innocent Lord. We remove the palms, symbol of praise that so quickly turned to derision and to cries of crucify. We remove the bowl and towel and the bread and wine, symbols of the sacrificial love of Jesus. We remove the nails that held our Saviour to the cross. And so we come now to dress the cross in the flowers that have been brought this morning. God has put an end to death and darkness in the risen life of Jesus Christ. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Death is defeated. The cross stands empty. We shall now transform it with the beauty of your flowers that have been brought in celebration and thanksgiving to God for the victory of love. Amen. Our next hymn is uh, from Singing the Faith 309, See What a Morning. And it would be really good if you could stand, if you're able, uh, and then we can start all together. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
And so we come to our opening prayers. Let us pray. Great and wonderful God, today of all days, we would praise you. We would bring you our worship, our gratitude, our faith, and our lives, offering them to you in joyful celebration at the victory you have won for us in Christ. Grant then that everything we offer today will speak of our devotion and desire to follow Christ, to give ourselves to him as he gave himself for us. Living God, we praise you once more for the good news of Easter, the triumphant message of resurrection, new hope, new joy, new life. We praise you for the truth at its hearts that your love could not be kept down, your purpose could not be defeated, and your mercy could not be destroyed. Teach us that what was true then is true now, that nothing can stand in the way of your sovereign power and redeeming grace. Assure us then, even when faith seems to fly in the face of reason, to trust in you, confident that your will shall be done and your kingdom come. Amen. Amen. And so we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. I am on. <laughs> I think today is the most important day of the year. What do you think? Yes. Yeah? Some people might think Christmas is really important, and I would agree and say, yeah, Christmas is really important. But I think that without today, life would have been really, really different. Because Jesus is the hinge of history that changed everything forever. And if it had just been crucified on Friday, well, Jesus would have been no different than thousands of other people who were put to death by the Roman authorities. Today is the, the day that makes things different because Jesus is risen. Do you believe that? Yes. Jesus is risen. So we've got some puzzles this morning and we're going to have a reading now, but we're going to have an Easter egg hunt. Has anybody had an Easter egg hunt at home this morning? Or is it a bit early? A bit early, yeah. Perhaps, perhaps you're having one later. But hidden in church this morning are three Easter eggs. So you've got two things to do now. You've got to listen to the story and listen to the puzzles. And you've got to look for three Easter eggs. Okay? So we're going to have our reading from Luke chapter 24. Jesus rises from the dead, Luke 24. It was very early in the morning on the first day of the week. The women took the spices they had prepared. Then they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from it. When they entered the tomb, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They were wondering about this. and Suddenly, two men in clothes as bright as lightning stood beside them. The women were terrified. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. Then the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Jesus is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you he would rise. It was while he was still with you in Galilee. He said, the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful people. He must be nailed to a cross. On the third day, he will rise from the dead. 
Then the women remembered Jesus' words. They came back from the tomb. They told all these things to the eleven apostles and to all the others. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them were the ones who told the apostles. But the apostles did not believe the women. Their words don't make any sense to them. But the apostles did not believe... Sorry... But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. He bent over and saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. Then he went away, wondering what had happened. Thank you both. So that's a bit of a puzzle. To start with, they went to the tomb expecting one thing, and they got something completely different. So lots and lots of puzzles there. And, and you wonder why when Jesus had said to them, I, I'm going to come back, I'm going to rise from the dead. And then um, Glennis said, they remembered what Jesus had said. Wouldn't you think that you wouldn't forget somebody saying something like that? So lots and lots of puzzles in this morning's reading and lots of bewildered people expecting one thing and getting something completely different. So can you see three Easter eggs in church this morning, because I need lots of people to go and find them for me. Because we're going to have a cracking Easter. I should have brought my goggles and my penny, but I don't have one of them. Well done. Right, bring it here. We've got... Oh, well done. We've got eggs. Have we got another one? Oh, somebody's fan. You all need to come and stay at the front. You can all stay. That's all right. Well, we're going to share them. Now, when you get Easter eggs in your house, if you want to come to the front, I'll stand over here, but if anybody wants to come to the front, you're very welcome to do so. When you get an Easter egg in your house, how do you open it? Gently, carefully. No, don't open it yet. Don't open it yet. Yeah. Yeah, let me get... With one of them? No. No, I brought me mallet this morning. I know it's a meat tenderizer, but it works very well. <laughs> But I don't know how to do that. But it works very well with Easter eggs, I'm told. I've lost my microphone. Right, who's going to hold it? Linus, you can hold that. Who said to me before Easter, you might want to all come round this side so everybody can see you on the camera. Who said to me before Easter that they were giving up chocolate? I think, Sylvia, did you give up chocolate? Did you? And did you manage it? Nearly. Well done. Right. So... We're going to have a smashing time this morning, and we're going to eat open our Easter eggs now. Let's go with that one, because that's my favourite. So what should we get inside this? Milk chocolate, a chocolate twirl. Have you got that at home? A chocolate twirl with an orange flavour bar. Shall we open it? Who wants to open it? Who found it? Do you want to open it? Come round the back so everybody can see you. And you open the egg and let's see all these twirls. And then we can share the twirls between us. That'll be good, won't it? I'm gonna open it. Put it on the plate and then you can have my mallet. We'll all stand back. <laughs> Just remember, we're all going to share this chocolate. So... So what's inside? You open it. Can you see on the camera? Hopefully you can. We might need the microphone. You hold it, Linus. You can do that. Right. Okay. Put it on there. And let me give you my mallet. Do you want to take it out of its wrappings? Yeah, the meat tenderizer. I'll call it a meat tenderizer. <laughs> right. There you go. Do you want to... If you, if you bend down, you can all see. And it should have twirls inside. Are you all ready for your twirls? Right, are you ready? Off you go. Smash it gently. <gasps> well done. Um, excuse me, there is a bit of an issue. Where's the twirls? Where's the twirls? 
Anybody seen the twirls? Did anybody open it while it was hidden? No? Well, it's empty. Well, that's a bit of a... Is that a cheat, do you think? Yeah, I think it's a cheat. A bit of a cheat. I think we do decide it's a bit of a cheat. Well, if you want to break it up a bit more... Not, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Well, actually, we'll, we'll put that there. Actually, you bash it a bit more and then we'll put it in the bag and then everybody can have a bit. Actually, the fact that the Easter egg is empty is very symbolic of today because when the women and when Peter and the others... Oh, that's, those are great pieces. Do you want to tip it in there for me? When they went to the tomb, the tomb was completely empty. They'd expected something inside. They didn't expect twirls. They expected to see a body of Jesus. And Mary went with the idea of, with all the spices and everything, that she was going to, to look after the body of Jesus. But when she got there, the tomb was empty, just like our Easter egg. And somebody had said on Facebook yesterday about Joseph of Arimathea, and it stuck with me, and I really liked it. Joseph, why did you have this new family, this new tomb carved in, in stone and give it to Jesus? And he said, I'm only lending it to him for the weekend. <laughs> I really like that. So the tomb, just like our twirl Easter egg, was empty. Well, I hope our other Easter eggs aren't empty, but we're not going to open them just yet. I don't know quite what we're doing next, so I'm just going to wait for this. We're going to sing. <laughs> we are. We're going to sing number 299, Easter Jubilation. Right. Do you all want to... St oh, sorry, switch off. You can stay. Okay, you know what you've got to do. Stand up and dance, please.
Well done, that was brilliant. Right, let me move that. So the empty tomb was not what they expected at all. And some people made it, thank you. Some people said, well, you know, we, we've got lots of conspiracy theorists around today. You'll know who those people are. And lots of people said, well, the disciples stole Jesus' body away or other people stole him away. So, um, what should we we're not opening that one. Let's go with the smartest, because I like smartest. Are oh, you yeah, right? We'll not have them. We'll not eat them. So, who's opening the smartest Easter egg? The one that found it. Okay, you hold on to the ma the, the meat tenderizer. Tenderizer, not an egg smasher. Oh, can, it, can you all see? If you move around to the sides a little bit, a bit more, everybody can see. So inside this egg, I am expecting to find Smarties. Who likes Smarties? Who likes Smarties? Anybody got Smarty Easter eggs at home? I have. Oh, no, have you got Smarties? Right. Let's see. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. There we go. I do like your Easter Bunny. I could have done some with some ears like that. Who's got the meat tenderizer? Right, let's go. So, in this acting, Smarties. So, off you go. Okay, are you, are you going to you smash it? And then you can all have a smash, actually. You could all take a turn. Let me move that out your way. Look for the Smarties. And anybody else want to have a go? Go on then, pass it round so you can all have a go. I can't see any Smarties yet. I can see wood in it, though. There's no wood in it. Whoa, that's a good smash. Right, so what's in, where's my Smarties? Oh, we've not got Smarties. We've got a cross. Well, did you not expect, did you? I expected Smarties to come out of Smarties. Did you, Florence? Did you expect Smarties out of that? But... Smarties are really good. I think quite a few of us said that we like Smarty Easter eggs. But have you got Smarty Easter egg at your house? Have you not opened it yet? You can open it today. Well, I'm not saying you can open it today because your mum and dad might say you can't, but you can from today. Phew, don't want to get into trouble. Inside... Our egg is not Smarties, but it's a cross of wood. Because actually, in there? well, how did it get in there? How did it get? How did somebody put it in there? Put it in there for a reason. Well, that's. <laughs> I shan't tell you. <laughs> but the cross is the greatest surprise of all. Something that was really, really horrible and really awful actually turned out to be for us the best thing of all because because of the cross we we don't get smarties no you're quite right because of the cross we don't get smart but we actually get something better i think we get something really better we get to know that god loves us and that jesus came for us and well actually if you go back to your seats just for now Inside all the seats, we're going to make a cross. Inside all the seats, you'll find pipe cleaners. Now, if you've not got a seat in front of you, the people behind, if you go back to your seats, we're going to do this, and then we're going to come back. You can smash the next one, okay? Shall I leave that? So inside your seats, you'll find pipe cleaners. And if you haven't, I've got some spare... In my bag. <laughs> Who down at the back? So, thank you, Heather. No, that's it. Sorry. Oh, the. Have you got them? So, what you do, we're going to. You couldn't all have a wooden cross, I'm really sorry. But you're going to make a cross, and hopefully you'll keep your cross either in your pocket, that's where I'd mine, or you might keep it in your Bible. So what you do is you turn, you make it halfway, turn it halfway. Now, I'm not very good at this, as you can tell. It's a bit, it doesn't really look like a cross. Turn it halfway, and then you bend it in till you've got a cross shape. So you can bend it in. Does that make sense? Is it right? Yep. Yeah. 
How are you doing with it? You see, I'm not very good at this either. Turn it over so you've got a, a crook. <laughs> <laughs> I, I practiced it for ages and I did really well. Some, sorry, start again. A blue Peter moment. This is one I made earlier. Has everybody got, everybody got one? So, let me show you. There you go. How are you doing? <laughs> I could make them for everybody, couldn't I? Have you got, you've got some Estelle. Oh, in the seat behind. There you go. Okay. So those look fantastic. Those are really good. So fold it down from the top, twist it round the side. And around that side, and then fold that up. <laughs> and I would never, <laughs> I'd never have got a job on Blue Peter. So you've all got a cross. Hopefully, they're all cross shaped. Thank you. You're very welcome. How are you doing? Everybody managing up? Heather, that's perfect. So Jerus. How are you doing round there? Are you alright with your crosses? Alright with your crosses round there. There's plenty of people around here who have not had chocolate, so there's plenty of chocolate for you all later. You've all got your cross. Oh, that's mine. Hello, would you, would you like that? Would you like a piece of chocolate? There you go. <laughs> it's the cross of Good Friday that sets us free. But it's the empty cross of Easter Sunday that says we are God's people and we are loved and we are really valued. So I'm going to invite you to hold your cross in your hand and we're going to say a prayer. We thank you, Father God, that you raised Jesus from death and that his life means that we too can live with him forever. We pray for those who haven't yet discovered that he is alive today and we pray that they will know the evidence of the empty tomb and meet with him. Amen. Amen. And your cross is your symbol of being able to say to people, Jesus is alive, Jesus is alive. Best kept secret? Best good news. Let's not keep it as the best kept secret. The children are going to sing for us. I'm going to invite them to come to the front and they're going to sing It's a Happy Day.
done. That's brilliant. I love that. Jesus is alive. It's a happy day. Do you want to go back to your seats? Because the, the congregation, we're all going to sing together. But then we're going to open the final Easter egg. What will we find in that? Well, it says it's got twirls. But we haven't been very successful yet. So let's see what that is. But before we do that, we're going to sing the hymn 298. Christ the Lord is risen today. So you're ready to open the final one? <coughs> Who's going to... I think Rhea, won, Rhea found it. But all of you come to the front and we'll open our final egg. So what's... Are you, are you looking after the meat tenderizer? So what are you expecting inside this one? What's do you, what do you think will be inside that one? Twirls. Do you think there'll be twirls inside that one? No. No? <laughs> okay. I'm not switched on, but that's all right. Who thinks there'll be twirls inside this Easter egg? What do you think will be inside it? Chocolate. Nothing. Nothing. Hollow? You think it'll be hollow? It'll just. 
it, it, apparently it won't have any orange twirls in it, but it'll be orange flavour. Right. Says, it says. It says. Yeah, it does like say it's going to have chocolate twirls. Oh, it does. It does. There, yeah. One large, one large one egg. egg. And a, and a chocolate bar, so it does. So if you come around the side, and then everybody can see. So if, if you come and stand here, then everybody can see you open it, Ray. Come and stand there. Just move out the side. Open a chocolate egg. <sighs> Give it a good rip. Come on. <laughs> Don't be gentle. So we think there's going to be twirl. Oh, oh. right. Let's. Where's our plate? Right, right. L Linus, you you bash it first. No, you can all have a bash. Everybody else have a bash. Well, what did you expect inside an egg? Chickens, chicks. Don't you get chickens inside eggs? Oh, oh. Let me right. Right, let me see. Anybody else? See, anybody else wants to have a... Oh, gosh, sorry. Sophia, do you want to have a bash? You've not had a bash of the egg. Ah. Right, there's a chick for each of you. Because inside a ch an egg, you will find chicken. So you can each... That's... Ooh, don't bash anymore, because it'll, be, it'll not be worth eating. Right. What is it? Okay, right, well, let's put that inside there. Let's put that inside there. And then after church, everybody can have a piece of chocolate. But did somebody just pick up? Right, somebody, lovely lady and gentleman, some lovely ladies and gentlemen, I don't know who, but has made one of these for every single one of you. So this morning you're going to have, when you get out to go out to church, you've got to have a rabbit and inside the rabbit is a chocolate egg. And there's one for every one of you. But that's what is important about Easter, because it's about new life. There's no death anymore, because Jesus came back to life for us. And Jesus is alive for us this morning. So there's new life, and you can see it all around you. Have you, see, have you been out in the parks and the gardens? Did you see the pictures of, of the, uh, the sunrise this morning on the screen? We were up very early, really early, <laughs> really early for a sunrise service. So you've each got a chick, and after the service, you've all got a rabbit to take home. Now, sometimes you look at things, and you think they're dead. What do you think in my pot? Soil. Soil. So it looks really, really dead, doesn't it? It looks like there's nothing there and nothing's going to grow. But let me show you what's actually inside. Inside, it is alive. Inside is a seed. And these are sunflower <coughs> seeds. And for every single one of you after church, but now you can decorate your pot. You're going to decorate your pot. And then after the service this morning, because we're going to share communion in a minute, in each of your pots, there's some soil, and you can put a sunflower seed in. And if you keep it watered, they will grow. To yeah, well, you can start growing them now. And they'll grow, and they'll grow so tall that they'll be taller than the tallest person here. And if you take photographs during the summer, we'll be able to see who's grown the, the biggest sunflower. But actually, I want to give you all a balloon. Actually, when we talk about Easter being the biggest surprise of all because Jesus came back from the dead, some of these sunflowers, do you know what colour sunflowers usually are? Yellow. Yellow. Some of these are red. What? So they're really different. So within this pot, there are yellow sunflower seeds and there are red sunflower seeds. So when you grow your sunflower... It might not be yellow, it might be red, and that's a huge surprise. So if you've got a photograph of a red sunflower, that'll be wonderful. The here. Well, you're around the table, but not within church. I think there's quite a few people taller. But that's the biggest surprise of all. Everybody thought that Good Friday was utter failure, and it was the end of everything, but actually it was the beginning, because it means that Jesus came for us and loves us. So what you're going to do... I'll get the pots 
and there's the felt tips, and you can do whatever you want on your part. I put Jesus is risen, but you could put anything else you want to. And then after the service, you can put some soil in your part, and you can put your seed in. Is that all right? I don't know what we're doing now, so I'll turn over my page. We're going to have prayers. Thank you, Peter. (laughs) We're going to have the prayers of intercession. Thanks, Sam. Let me get you. And so we come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. (coughs) Gracious God, (coughs) reminded of all you suffered for our sakes, we bring before you our concerns for the world and its people. We pray for reconciliation in a world of so much division and overcoming of the barriers of fear, hatred, suspicion, that overshadow so many lives. We pray for justice in a world of haves and have-nots and end to greed, corruption and exploitation, to persecution and oppression, to violence and terror, to all that denies dignity of life and opportunity for the future. We pray for unity in the church a spirit of trust and harmony, love and acceptance, so that, respecting our differences, we may work together as one people and one goal. We pray for those of all faiths and none, creeds and convictions, that there may be dialogue rather than confrontation. We pray for those known and unknown to us, stretched to breaking point by their experiences of life, the disheartened and disillusioned, the lonely, depressed, afraid, anxious, the sick and the terminally ill, those who mourn and for all for whom the future looks bleak. And finally, we pray for ourselves that we may know you more and rejoice in your love forevermore. And we ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, I'm Simon. Welcome to Bolton. Um, I'm the Anglican Area Dean at Bolton. And today we're meeting with a group of church leaders to spend some time reflecting on how we grow closer together, closer to God, and closer to the mission and ministry we're called to in this town. As part of that, we'd like to share with you the words of the Nicene Creed, spoken by different leaders, with an opportunity for us to reflect together on what unites us, what brings us together as we seek to serve God here in this amazing borough. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ. The only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light. True God from true God. Begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven. And is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life. Who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
We're going to have our offering in a moment. Um, if you are visiting this morning, please do not feel that you have to put into our offering. We're just glad that everybody's here to be a church family together. But if you've got your Easter offering envelopes, please would you put them in with the offering as well. Is somebody going to tell us about your bike ride? Who's going to talk about your bike ride? Who's doing it? Oh, come, come this way. You tell us about your bike ride. Morning everyone, and today we're here to tell you about our charity event. We have worked very hard to raise all of this money. We had a bake sale in church and did a bike ride round Mossbank Park. Thank you for baking and buying all of the cakes. Thank you for sponsoring and supporting us. <coughs> it's for a great chari charity called Action for Children. We are still working out the mass of the money. <laughs> but we think we have raised over 500 pounds. Well done. <laughs> well done, you're all stars. We're going to have a bit of a tidy up at the front because we're having communion in a moment. But just to say, there is a pot for everybody and seeds for everybody. So if you want to make a pot with a sunflower seed in, just to remind yourself that Jesus is alive and it looks like something's dead. But from that, hundreds and thousands, with a sunflower seed on the, the, the face of it, there are hundreds and thousands of seeds that, that multiply and grow. And that's the thing about Jesus. We know Jesus, but we need that message of Christ being risen to multiply and grow and that's that's the challenge for us as Christians today so they'll be in the coffee area after the service the, pot, the pots and the seeds and, and the soil um, but now we're going to make our offering thank you Sophia thank you Lord, we bring our gifts of money to you today with our heartfelt thanks for all you have, does, you have done for us. We thank you that you are risen, that it's not you might have been risen or you were risen, but you are risen. And Jesus, we thank you for that. And we pray that our gifts of money and our own lives will be used so that others will know that message. So it's not just Jesus is risen or let's open an Easter egg but it's Jesus is risen and that really touches our hearts. Be with each one of us, we pray today. In Jesus' name, amen. 
We're going to sing our hymn before we share in communion together. 305, low in the grave he lay. together it's the family meal it's the meal that Jesus gave us and the meal that Jesus said eat this together and when you do remember me so we're going to do that and I'm going to um, it's non-alcoholic wine it's grape juice and it's gluten-free bread so hopefully everybody will be able to share that and just to say if you're visiting this morning, you are very, very welcome to come and share at this communion table. If it's your first time at the Triangle, welcome, and you are welcome to come and share in this communion together. And if you're watching at home, when uh, myself and those who are assisting um, are sharing, invite you to do that at the same time, because then the cameras will be switched off and you'll see videos at home while people within the church family take communion. So everybody's welcome to come to this table. And if you want to come as a family, you are welcome to do that too. It's really, really important that, uh, that we feel to, that we are together today. We are Christ's family in this place. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. I invite you to share the peace together or just to say Happy Easter and introduce yourself to somebody that you don't know. Let's share together. Do you know, we might not have enough glasses. What a, 
what a great situation to be in that we might not have enough glasses today. So it might be that if you do come with your family, you might have to share. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. We've got tissues and we'll manage. But it's good to be together. Thank you, Anne. We'll share together if we need to. This is the table of Jesus. And it is a happy day because Jesus is alive. It wasn't that he wasn't alive uh, and then he came back then. He's alive now and he's alive with us and here together with us this morning. So as much as I stand here and say these words, as much as we do things together, it's Jesus that says, come, come to my table. Come and receive these gifts that I give you, gifts of new life, gifts of hope, gifts of joy that goes way beyond anything that we've ever had. Jesus says, come. Because I'm inviting you because this is my table. And the night before he went to the cross, he sat with his friends, with his best mates around a table. And he broke bread with them. And he said, this is my body. Remember that this is my body. Treat it as a symbol of my body whenever you eat it. And whenever you do, remember that I love you. And I gave my life for you. Nobody took it from me. I gave my life for you, and I give it in love. So we remember today that Jesus gave his life in love. And when they'd finished eating, Jesus took a cup of wine, and he said to them, drink this cup of wine, all of you, for this wine represents my blood that is shed for you. And it's shed for you so that you can know that your sins are forgiven. Whatever you do wrong... The mistakes you made, the deliberate things that you do wrong, they can be forgiven because of my blood. And don't we need to hear that? We are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Know that you are loved and you are forgiven. And if you'd have been the only person alive, Jesus would have gone to the cross for you because he loves you. He loves us all, but he loves you. And whatever you are facing in your life at the moment. But that wasn't the end of the story. Because today we celebrate Easter. And during that day that Jesus first appeared to Mary. He later then appeared to all of them in the upper room. He appeared to Thomas who doubted him. He appeared on a beach and he made a barbecue for them as two disciples were running away from home because to home because they were so frightened for their own lives. Jesus appeared. Jesus is alive. And in the bread and the wine, he is alive to you and I today. So it's a happy day because Jesus is alive. And as those who are assisting me come forward to eat together, before we share, I invite you just to think about what it means to you to say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive, for Jesus is risen. So I invite those who are assisting to come forward, please. given for you. The body of Christ was given for me. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Heavenly blood of Christ shed for you. So come, all is ready. And Jesus invites us to share in this feast together, the most wonderful feast of all. And his Holy Spirit is poured out upon these gifts so that we may feel his love and his presence.
A crown of thorns placed on his head He knew that he would soon be dead He said, did you forget me, father, did you? He hung his head and prepared to die Then lifted his face up to the sky Said, I am coming home now, Father, to you A reed which held his final sip Was gently lifted to his lips He drank The soldier who had used his sword To pierce the body of our Lord Said truly this was Jesus Christ our Savior He looked with fear upon his sword Then turned to face his Christ and Lord Took from his head the thorny crown And wrapped him in a linen gown Then laid him down to rest inside the tomb The holes in his hands, his feet inside Now in our hearts we know he died Three days went by, again they came To move the stone, to bless the slain With oil and spice anointing, hallelujah But as they went to move the stone They saw that they were not alone For Jesus Christ has risen Oh uh -huh.
neon lights and stained glass windows, old bar stools and back row pews. I ran to one more than the other, but I couldn't outrun you. Trying to fill up all the empty, trying to numb the pain inside, thinking you'd never forgive me for all those Saturday nights. But thank God for Sunday morning. Thank God for 316 and the words it read that say you bled and gave your life for me. Thank God for the choir singing and the voice saying come back home. Saturday night looked like the end of the story. Thank God for Sunday morning. Like mine, it's what you do. Yeah, somehow you bring dead things back to life. And it might look like it's as over as a stone over a grave. But I've seen you move. I'm living proof. You still roll stones away. Thank God for Sunday morning. Thank God for 316 and the words in red. Like freedom on my face, it really is a new beginning. It really is amazing grace. Thank God for Sunday morning. Thank God for 360. Sunday morning. Thank God for Sunday morning. Every stain of 
living proof cause I was dead in the spiritual but I walked out the tomb I've been raised to life by the power of Christ that amazing grace has made me brand new so if you're looking for the only brother he's not here I heard that resurrection call him love I found it forgave the criminal and tore the prison down I moved past the past I'm free at last hallelujah nothing's holding me down so if you're looking for the only brother he's not Sunday morning, he's not here, no.
Lord, we thank you that you've fed us with this bread and this wine that remind us of how much you love us and what you gave for us. But remind us too that you share it with us. And we might not all have been able to drink bread or eat wine, uh, or eat bread or drink wine, but you've shared it with us and, and we felt you alive in our hearts. So bless us, we pray, as your Easter people, as we go to serve you and love you. For in your name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing our closing hymn. Um, we're going to sing Thine Be the Glory. And during the singing of the hymn, the choir will, uh, the band will sing the first verse and accompany it, and then we will all join in the rest of the hymn. And during the hymn, the cross will be taken out. We'll not follow it, but the cross will be taken out. And then we're going to share uh, tea and coffee and chocolate together. Um, and you can make your own pot for your sunflower to take home. But we continue to worship God this, at this moment and throughout this day and forevermore as we sing, Thine be the glory. Thank you.
One with the Father. One with the Father.